What's up guys, don't have a whole lot going on this weekend. Uh, I'm not going camping or working on the truck or anything, so I was kind of struggling for an idea of what to make a video on. Um, and then I noticed I've been seeing some things online about people asking about dual battery setups or a single battery setup and fuse panels and so on and so forth and electronics and power outlets in your truck and all that. So I'm kind of going to go over what I got in my Tacoma today in this video. Uh, it's a super simple setup and uh, in reality, it, it was, it's, it's worked out great for me the whole time. I, I haven't needed dual batteries set up, maybe if I were to camp somewhere for a week long, but my single batteries worked out great for me. So now we'll, uh, we'll jump right into that. It's a little windy out here. Hopefully the audio isn't too muffled, but we're gonna give you guys a little look at my system here. To start it off, got a North Star Group 27 AGM battery. Um, in reality, I should have ordered the 27F, and I knew that when I ordered it, I just forgot. And uh, if I were to get the 27F, then the positive terminal would be here, the negative would be here, uh, just like the OEM battery. This battery fits in here with no modifications. Um, this is the factory battery hold down. Um, rock solid and it fits in there great. Uh, moving on, this is a Blue Sea 12 circuit fuse panel. And as you can see, it gives you connections here for your, uh, yeah, those are your negative connections. And then these are your positive. And of course, here's your, your fuses for each circuit. Um, this right here is a 100 amp circuit breaker by Blue C. Blue C Systems, They're, they make this, this, and they also make my power panel in the back, which I'll show you guys. Um, so kind of, next I'm gonna kind of explain how the system itself works. So coming from our positive here, we have our main power cable, which is a four gauge wire, and it runs to the bottom of this circuit breaker here, which you probably can't really see. Um, and that allows me to cut the power on and off to the fuse panel. So if I suspect there's a draw with some of my accessories, uh, or even if you're just you're working on some part of the system and you don't want any any hot right here, you can just cut that. No power. Everything that is connected to this is dead, which is pretty convenient. Um, and also gives you some protection if there were uh, short or anything like that anywhere else down there in the circuit. Um, All right, and then over here on our negative side. You can see there's a factory ground that goes right here. Uh, I want to say that I replaced the ground strap, the factory one from here to here. Um, and then this is the other ground strap and that actually runs over to our blue C panel and grounds right here, comes up back through there. Um, and then obviously our power runs from here to here and that connects to the panel and that's what gives all of our, our power and ground to the panel. And then from there, of course, you would just connect your power and ground for your accessory and run it as usual instead of having it all hanging off your battery here. So as I stated before, I used a four gauge wire from Lowe's. Uh, you can go get it in bulk. I think I got five foot. I ended up having to remake this once I realized I got the terminal wrong. Um, so having five foot ended up being just enough for me to get this all completed uh maybe five foot will do it for you too uh, just to be safe and then i got some this is actually expandable wire wire cable sleeving off of ebay um see you go like that and it gets bigger smaller so i slid that over these are some eyelets from lowe's that i filled with stripped into the wire filled those with solder standing up in a vise heated it up with a torch and basically got the solder nice and bubbly and then shove the wire in there and then this is just just your regular heat shrink that i did over it just to kind of to clean it up a bit and uh that's kind of what i did for all my connections here these are some grommets uh rubber grommets to help protect from the sharp edges on your wiring um this is a pelfrey built fuse panel by the way which is discontinued they went out of business um bought it from bay area metal Fab fabrication when they bought out their warehouse uh, there's a few other companies that offer this panel 
It's convenient because it had the cutouts for the circuit breakers to fit in here, so it just bolts right in because it hangs through there. Uh, had the slots for the fuse panel to secure to it, which is just four screws, and of course all the little cutouts for the wires. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys to the back of the truck here. And this is where I have the auxiliary power panel. They call it the under deck power panel or something like that from Blue Sea. You can look online. Typically, these are oriented horizontal. Um, I normally have loaded up stuff in my bed like wood and stuff that could damage it. Most people will mount them on these doors for access to get to stuff. Um, obviously, I already had a compressor hook up there. So that wasn't an option. And then this side, as you can see, it just gets beat up. It just wouldn't be safe there. So I opted to actually put it vertical right here on the bed where this kind of protects it and uh, kind of keeps it at harm's way from things. All I had to do was rotate your voltmeter here. So whenever I want to use this back there, just turn the power on and then it shows your battery voltage, which is nice because you can keep an eye on it while you're camping. Obviously with a better battery like I have, it's not as much of a worry as it used to be with my stock battery. Your first connection here, you got two USB ports, which is awesome. Charge phones, uh, whatever you need from there. I actually run, I keep a Luma Noodle and an LED strip light in this bag right here. And uh, so it's convenient, I just pull that out, turn this on, plug it into my USB, and then I have some Velcro that I hang it up there on the cap uh, door. So, and then here's a regular 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter. Um, I don't really use this much often, but uh, obviously if, if these were full, I could put another USB cigarette lighter out of it there, and that would be useful as well. As far as running the wires back to this panel itself, uh, what I did was use 10 gauge wires, again from Lowe's. I don't remember exactly how many feet I got. It's a 16 foot long truck, give or take. So I think I got quite a bit, uh, considering I had to run two separate wires uh, from the fuse panel itself. Just connected directly to the negative connection and the positive connection, and put some of that expandable wire uh, tubing on it, and some heat shrink and stuff for the connections in the back um, to keep it nice and safe. We'll see if we can see kind of where I ran it. I think I ran it in the frame rail. Yeah, so if you look right here, this is the harness that runs up to there. You can see it's in this protective cable. Um, protects those two wires from chafing at least a minor bit of protection. And I have that running all the way up the frame rail. And I want to say, yep, and it runs up the frame rail, up through here, and then I have it zip tied across there along with the harness for my ARB compressor um, over there to the fuse panel. So that worked out real good. As far as how long this battery lasts me when I'm out camping, uh, I run a fridge, just those LED lights in the rear, charge some phones, um, and it lasts me quite a while. I would say probably in mild temps or summertime temps, I could probably get two to three days of the fridge running as long as I'm not trying to have it completely frozen in there. I only keep it about 32. Um, in the wintertime, uh, probably over three days considering the fridge doesn't have to run much. Uh, but it's been perfect for me. We typically don't camp in the same spot every night. So just a single battery setup has been perfect. And then I don't run a whole bunch of uh, LED lights or anything like that. So the single battery has just been kind of the ticket for me and the way to go. I didn't really see a need for a dual battery. I guess it'd be different if I had like a 12 volt water pump or something crazy. But um, just keeping it simple has worked great. Um, I'm going to link all of these in Amazon like I usually do so you can check out the prices I want to say the circuit breaker was about 50 um, the fuse panel was roughly about 40 bucks and the battery was closer to three to four hundred um, batteries pricey but it'll be worth it it comes with a five-year warranty North Star has a great reputation um, so it was kind of a no-brainer to go with them North Star and then X2 power is also the same just a rebranded battery of the the same one so and if anybody's interested in the uh, specs on this battery you can find them online but also I'll zoom in here so you can see pulse cranking amps 1750 cold cranking amps 930 
and then 195 minutes on reserve so those are the specs on the battery obviously way better than stock and a lot better than most other batteries of the same group size and like I said before it's a positive that it just fits in the uh, in the factory location here with the factory tie down all right guys so that concludes my battery setup and my fuse panel setup uh, as always I'll link everything in the description so you guys can go buy it for yourself um, I really hope this video helped, and if you liked the video, subscribe, give it a like, share it. Um, really hoping to get some more useful information out to you guys, and also some other fun videos as I go on some trips. Uh, like I said before, I didn't have a whole lot going on this weekend, so I kind of figured I'd go a little bit in depth with that, because I've seen people have some questions about it. So, alright guys, have a good week.